In this video, I'm going to show the results of a Division B non-bonus tower and give my recommendations on if this is a good approach to take this season or not. I will also share details of a new construction technique for connecting the column and the base, which worked very well for me. If you recall from my original benchmark video, I showed a 6.395 gram bonus tower that would have scored 3,127 in competition. I also mentioned what an equivalent non-bonus tower that held 15 kilograms would have needed to weigh to score the same thing. In that case, it was 4.796 grams. In general, if we can make non-bonus towers that are better, or even just equivalent to the bonus version, it's a much better idea to go with the non-bonus design, as they don't need to hold the entire 15 kilograms to get the maximum score. Here is a picture of the final tower. I will show the details of the build and the final assembly in a bit, but for now, notice that the base is much smaller than the bonus version. We only need to span the 20 centimeter square in the middle, and when you rotate the tower like this, minimizing the base width, it really makes this design competitive, as the non-vertical loads are much smaller due to the steeper angle of the base legs. There is also less cross-member material in the base due to the smaller size, which can reduce the mass as well. Let's start by looking at the details for the column. If you watch my dedicated video on the columns, there should be no surprises here at all. I'm using the exact same design as all the rest with five layers of cross members and one eighth inch square legs. I chose leg material that was on the light side of what I tested before, around 0.22 grams for each leg. In my previous columns, legs that were that light sometimes held 15 kilograms, but they also sometimes failed quite early. I knew I needed to make a very light tower, so I rolled the dice and used these light legs. For the cross members, I used fairly light 1 32nd inch thick balsa sheet and cut the strips to 1.25 millimeters. You can see the mass of each layer here in red for a final total cross member weight of 0.483 grams. The completed column was 1.518 grams, which included 0.181 grams of glue. You'll notice I have a note here about holding 10 kilograms. I pre-tested this column by itself to 10 kilograms to make sure I didn't have really bad legs or some other problem. I highly recommend you do that even for this non-bonus case. Even though we don't need to hold 15 kilograms, I was hoping to hold at least 13 kilograms, so pre-testing to something like 10 is a very good test. Here are the details for the base. It is also the exact same basic design as my benchmark build. The big difference here is that all the cross members, including the horizontal piece at the bottom, use the same 1 32nd inch by 1.25 millimeter balsa I cut for the column. I decided to use light 3 32nd inch square balsa for the top horizontal pieces. You can see that all the cross member pieces, including the top and bottom horizontal piece, were 1.069 grams. The completed base was 2.655 grams. I also pre-tested this by itself to 10 kilograms to make sure there were no problems with the build or unexpected failures. Before I show the results of the completed tower, I want to spend some time talking about how I assembled the column and the base. If you recall from my benchmark build, I had some issues with alignment and wasn't happy with those results. It still worked fine, but I wanted to make those joints much better this time around. Here you can see I have temporarily taped the base and the column jigs together and put the completed base back in place. I recommend you work on a perfectly flat surface like this ceramic tile I'm using here. The pre-tested column is ready to be installed next. If I zoom in on this picture, you can see that the base legs are perfectly flat with the top and the column jig is going to do its job of aligning the legs exactly with the base. This next step takes a little patience, but it's worth it. Here you can see that I've slid the completed column over the jig and have it pressed perfectly flat against the legs of the base. Note that I have not glued anything at this point. Here is the number one tip with this technique. You do not need to apply glue between the legs. It works fine by only putting a small amount of glue at the outer edges of these joints where I'm showing with the arrows. If your tower is well built, that joint really only has vertical forces between the legs and the smallest amount of glue will keep them in place. It's also very easy to add glue on the sides of the four legs while the tower is on the full jig like this. The complete tower should slide right off the jig once you have glued the legs. 
You might be tempted to add glue to the insides of the joints, but it's not necessary and will only add extra weight. Here is a picture of the top of the tower showing how level it is. The goal is to never have to do any sanding once you have built the column and the base. If all goes well, your tower should be as close to perfectly level as possible. Let's test this thing and see how it does. Here it is just before testing and it weighs 4.141 grams. This is my normal testing setup, so nothing new here. I do have over 20 kilograms of sand in the auto loader to guarantee a failure. I'm not expecting it to hold over 15 kilograms, but you never know. I'll jump ahead a bit to the exciting part. Here you can see that the total mass held was 13.621 kilograms. I was pretty happy with that result. Let's take a look at the slow-mo footage and do some math to see if this was worthwhile or not. For a non-bonus tower, the score is just the actual efficiency. In this case, 13,621 grams divided by 4.141 grams for a score of 3,289.3. I'll freeze the video right at the point of first failure. We can see that it's a column leg failure, which isn't too surprising as those are really light legs. The major takeaway from this exercise is that the non-bonus design can be every bit as competitive as the bonus benchmark build that I showed earlier. With the added benefit of not having to worry about a failure just under 15 kilograms, which would ruin a bonus build, my recommendation would be to focus on the non-bonus design as the safest way to make highly competitive towers this year. Good luck this season and thanks for watching. Feel free to reach out if you have any specific questions.